Great. So this is Joint Work with Nobuko Yoshida. And I'm going to start by telling you a tale of two calculi, the lambda calculus and the pi calculus. The lambda calculus being a fundamental calculus of functions, and pi a fundamental calculus of processes and concurrency. Now, these two great fundamental elephants are actually quite similar. And this was formalized in 1992 by Robin Milner, who showed that you could take lambda terms and encode them into the pi calculus, so you could represent functions as processes. Now, since then, there was, since uh, Alonzo Church introduced the lambda calculus, he then added the simple type theory, which refines the set of possible lambda terms uh, into uh, strongly normalizing terms. Uh, so that, that's a sort of refinement on the lambda calculus. And as a kind of parallel to that, there's the concept of session type theory, which refines pi calculus terms. It gives a subset of terms over here. And it was shown uh, by Tonino, Carries, and Fenning in a really nice paper that simply typed functions can be encoded into session typed processes. And actually, this follows Milner's uh, encoding. It shows how, how genius that encoding was, and that it gives you a way to transport, to transport over function types into session types. Now, I like to describe simple types as uh, what a com computation uh, uh, what a computation produces and what it, what it takes as input. And session types have some element of that, but they're also a bit more fine-grained. They also describe how a computation proceeds with the sending and receiving of channels. Now, on the lambda calculus side, there's another notion of, of a behavioral type that describes how a computation uh, is produced, and that's the notion of an effect system which describes impure aspects of computation. And that was introduced in the 80s. You can describe various effects in your program. And then there was this really nice paper, actually, at Popple in 1994 that showed a very general, um, general uh, effect system and that instantiated it for concurrent processes. So I was looking at this paper and I was thinking, OK, so what's the difference then between this kind of effect system and session types? Are they the same? What's the relative expressive power of effect systems and session types? So part of this work goes in this traditional direction, encoding things from the lambda calculus world into the pi calculus. And we show that you can embed effect systems into session types. And in fact, we, we don't just do this for the lambda calculus. We do this for PCF and PCF with parallelism and this kind of rich algebraic structure of effects, which I'll talk about. But then we do something that's even more novel, which is to go back the other way. And we show that PCF with a parallel construction can actually be instantiated to encode the pi calculus with session types. So we can go back the other way from the pi side to the lambda side. So uh, the paper is basically in two halves on these two bits. And I'll just give you some, de some little details and hints of how that works and a flavor of it today. But there's lots of details in the paper. So we've got these two type systems. Uh, PCF type and effect systems are of this form. You have some term M of type tau, which can produce some effects described by F in some uh, value context. And we're going to have some rich algebraic structure, which I'll explain in a bit. And the pi calculus has a process P. And the session typing will add an environment which describes the behavior of that process along some channels. So there'll be an, there's an environment which maps channels to their session type and also a value environment. So I appreciate that session types maybe aren't no, very well known to all of you. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick primer. In this talk, I'm not going to show any sort of, uh, I'm not going to show much syntax. It's mostly going to talk about the type level. Um, so just a little primer. Uh, session types can res, uh, describe a sequence of send and receive actions. So sending a tau and receiving a tau. So for example, if I have a channel on which I send an integer, its session type describes that an integer send is happening. And this also works in a higher order way. So say I've got a channel D over which I receive a channel E. And then on E, I send a bool. Then the session type describes this, this behavior. I'm receiving a channel, and that channel is going to be, have a bool sent on it. Now, there's a notion of, uh, of, of um, alternati alternative behavior. Uh, so you can offer a choice between uh, n labels. It's a bit like a variant. 
uh, or you can select a choice from amongst, amongst these different behaviors. And core to the session type idea and how it guarantees uh, communication safety uh, is the notion of duality, which relates sending, receiving, offering, and selecting. So the dual of a receive type is a send type, and we can define this dualizing function recursively. And similarly, the dual of offering a number of label choices is that someone selects one of these choices. So th this is just a fragment of the duality function, but it's quite important in the, uh, the safety of the system. Uh, so how this comes about is that if I've got a process P, and I, have, I use one end of a channel in an S-like way, and I use the other end of the channel in a dual way, and that's uh, the other end of the channel, the dual endpoint, is denoted by C bar, then uh, these kind of behaviors line up, and we have a safe communication uh, behavior, and we can uh, bind this channel, and that, that creates a new channel. So here's an example of something that's wrong. We've got a process P that sends two integers, and we have a process Q that on the opposite side receives one integer. We put those together, but this is ill-typed because every send needs a receive. And in the parallel composition, we have this operator that checks duality on, on both sides. And we have some other uh, things in there as well. We've got some uh, recursion in session types, a notion of replication, and uh, this item here, end, which says that we're not going to use the channel anymore. So a very brief reminder about effect systems. Uh, traditionally, you see just the, often see the sequential part. We have some monoidal structure that describes how effects are composed sequentially. So for just the lambda calculus, we, if we've got a function, uh, sorry, if we've got a, a, an expression m with effects f, it has some free variable x, and we abstract on that variable, then we encapsulate all those effects. They're latent, they're waiting to come out when we apply the function, but the function is itself pure, so it's marked with i. And then the app rule here describes the left to right call by value. It sort of shows us that we've got a call by value uh, evaluation order here. We've got some term m, which can produce some effects f. It's a function which, once it's applied, has effects h. The argument has effects g. So when we do the application, we get those effects combined together. Now, this sequential structure is actually something that exists in session types as well. We've got this notion of prefixing with send and receive actions. And we can think of this as the, the difference between consing onto a list and concatenating lists. And we have end, which is the kind of pure behavior. We're not doing anything with the channel. And sort of key to the developments then in this paper is that session types and rich effect systems have the same structure. They have very similar structure, and we exploit that in the encoding. So we also, in our effect systems, have an operator for combining effects in a conditional, and this relates to selection and branching. Uh, a notion of repetition, a kind of clean E-star operation. This relates to fixed points and the notion of replication in session types. Sub-effecting, when we approximate effectful behavior, relates to subtyping. And an operation that describes how you compose effects in parallel relates to the, the, the predicate that, that checks that, uh, that your use of channels is well, well balanced in a, in a parallel composition. So there's kind of structure on both sides which is related. So in the first part, what we do is we take PCF terms with some general that can be parameterized for some particular notion of effect. So it has a general effect system. And we embed this as a process. So syntactically, but this is also typed, and we have some parameters to this encoding. Uh, processes don't normally return a result, so we have to nominate a channel with which we're going to use to send our result at the end. That's R. And so when we type this, we have a, a, a channel R of which we send our tau. And then we have this special channel, which I'll call the effect channel, which is a channel over which we're going to perform our effectful behavior. So its session type is calculated from the effect information in our PCF term. So we've got interpretation f here, and I'm going to give you an example of that in a moment. So the idea is that we can encode the effect behavior into the session types. And so we do it at the syntax level, encoding effects into processes, and at the type level. Now going back the other way, sessions into effects, we do this by instantiating our effect algebra with a kind of session typey effect algebra that emulates session types. 
So we take a, a, pro, a process, a well-typed process, map it to a PCF term whose effect is an interpretation of the session type information. So the encoding uh, is parameterized by a, a few bits of information, uh, just in the same way that our PCF system is parameterized on a particular notion of effect. So it could be state or input output or, or, or resource counting. Um, so when we encode one of these terms into a process, I mentioned that there was this effect channel with which we're going to simulate the effect behavior. And this channel needs to interact with something and interacts with a process which is an effect handler, which is going to handle any uh, essentially requests for effectful operations. And this is by analogy uh, with the concept of an exception handler. If I throw an exception, a handler catches it and, and, has, and uh, deals with that. And so this, this occurs in the work of, uh, of Plotkin, Kretner, Bauer, in the notion of algebraic effects. And we're kind of using that idea here to have a handler process with which we can interact to do our effectful behavior. And the session type on our effect channel describes exactly what that behavior is in the same way as an effect type. So we have to give also then an interpretation from effect annotations into session types. And that satisfies some homomorphism property, so mapping sequential composition structure into a sequential composition structure for session types. And we define this uh, operator here in the paper, which is a, it's a, it's a sequential op uh, composition for sessions. And then we need to encode any effect-specific operations like gets and puts. So I'm actually going to focus on the example here with get and put, and a simple state-based uh, state effect system where you can record a sequence of, get and, of typed get and put operations. You combine the information together by concatenating these lists, and the pure effect is the empty list. So if I have the get operation, I get something of type tau, and then I record as a singleton list that get action. Now the encoding, interacts with a, uh, a process which emulates a single cell mutable store. So when I do a get operation, I select a get behavior from my store, and then the store sends me back something of type tau, so I receive that. Now a put operation, if I've got some pure value of type tau, so it's marked with the empty effect, and I'm gonna put that uh, into my store, so that's recorded in the session type, uh, sorry, in the effect type. Then my interaction is to select the put behavior and then send the, to the store something of type tau. There's a little interpretation there, because we also have to interpret the types. And so the store is a kind of recursive process uh, that you can find in uh, Milner's book. It's called a variable agent there. And that emulates a single mutable memory cell. So now we've, we've started to define, essentially, a mapping from effect information into session types. So if the head of our list is this get tau, then we map that to selecting the get branch and receiving something of type tau, and then we can recursively uh, build the rest of our session type with the, the tail of our list. Put is very similar, and then when we get to the end of the list, this just maps to end, and this has this sort of homomorphism property. Now, there's a slight subtlety here in that when I have to do this recursive call, what that's saying is, you know, I'm doing a get action here, but then there's some other behavior that, that goes on in the rest of the computation that someone else is going to do. And so actually what I have to do with effect channels is something a bit more subtle. I can't just use one directly. In the encoding, what has to happen is that I have to pass this effect channel around throughout my computation following the sequential left to right call by value reduction order and so that it's accessible at each point and I can use that to interact with my handler. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, so for a let, let's just take the let binding construct. We've got uh, M, which has effects F. We've got N, which has effects G. And we're binding that M to the X. So actually, inside the encoding, we have two parameters, these uh, EI and EO. And they're going to carry in the effect channel incoming, EI, and carrying it, carry it out, EO. So EI is typed with. Uh, the it, it receives an effect channel which can do F compose H behavior. And it sends out a channel which can do H behavior. And this is for all H. So it's a kind of continuation passing encoding. And then it sends out its result on Q, which is of type sigma. Now for N, I receive on EI something which can do G compose K. And I send out something which can do K. And this is for all K. 
and then I send out the result. Now, what I want to do is compose these two encodings together along these two arrows. So I do that first by instantiating H with G compose K so that they have dual types here. Uh, do a bit of re alpha renaming so that they, they match. And then I can compose those, those get composed together. So I have the effect channel coming in here. Its capability is to do the effects of F, G, K. That F capability gets discharged. It gets passed on. Now it can do G, K. That G capability gets discharged, and out goes something with K. And at the very end of the encoding, this K gets instantiated to the purity to end. And we hook that up this way. So we have some soundness theorems. Beta eta equality in, P in PCF is preserved by the encoding. And we have an operational correspondence that says, if my PCF term can make a reduction, then its encoding can make a reduction in the pi calculus to some process P. And this P is barbed congruent to the encoding of N. So essentially, reduction and uh, the encoding compute, uh, commute. That's the soundness direction. And then we also have a completeness direction. So if the encoding makes a step in the pi calculus to some process P, then this corresponds to uh, some number of reductions in PCF. And it goes this way. OK. So that's sort of one half of the encoding. And the paper has all the details, talks about these different parameters. You need the handler. You need to encode your operations and the different uh, effect, and effect interpretation. And we have uh, a variety of examples. Um, uh, also including this counting effects over natural numbers. Uh, one restriction is that all of our examples are kind of have a linear, linear continuation behavior. And so we're looking at uh, generalizing this at the moment. So I'm going to give you a few details then about the reverse encoding. We want to go from the session type pi calculus and instantiate PCF with, and instantiate its effect system with something that describes session type like behavior. So kind of key to this is having the PAR construct in PCF. So we really need that to, to uh, simulate the PAR uh, parallel composition in the pi calculus. And then we instantiate the PCF effect system with finite maps from channels to some representation of session types. It's, qu it's quite similar, but with some uh, slight permutation. And then we build up this effect algebra, algebra to replicate all the kind of session type uh, things that go on. So for example, for the parallel composition, we replace this with a, a predicate which checks that things are balanced, checks that session types are balanced. Then we instantiate uh, the operations with pi calculus like communication operations, send, receive, new. And then there's an operational semantics based on queues. So this is how the basic send and receive operations look. They're functions which have a latent effect which describes the session behavior on this channel C. So I receive something of type tau, and in the, in the effect, I have this little map which says that C is a, uh, a, receive, uh, a receive effect. And send is similar. Then the sequential composition operation for effects looks at when you, looks at the, uh, uh, when you have, uh, if you've got a, a channel which you use in an S-like way, sequentially composed with some computation which uses C in a T-like way, then these get composed together. So the encoding is kind of fairly straightforward, uh, but we have some slight different uh, representations going on there. Um, a very small morsel of how this looks in the syntax. It's actually much more straightforward syntactically in this direction, but uh, this is a pi calculus term sending a V, and this gets turned into a let with this uh, send, uh, uh, and then sequentially composed with the interpretation of the rest of the process, and receive a similar like this. Uh, so that part's kind of more straightforward, and you can see it in the paper. The sort of complexity in this direction is getting everything inside of the effect algebra. And we have uh, a similar operational co correspondence. I'm kind of a little low on time. But basically, similar to before, if the pi calculus makes a reduction, then it's encoding into, P uh, into PCF can make a reduction. And what you end up with is something which is beta eta equivalent to the process, you, uh, the encoding of the process uh, Q after the reduction. And then the converse of that direction. So it basically shows that 
it, when PCF makes some steps, those steps are, are, are simulated. Uh, sorry, when the Pi calculus makes some steps, those steps, are, same steps are simulated in PCF. So we actually use this to build a prototype, and this is our artifact. So we take the sessions into effect PCF encoding. We combine that with uh, an approach for embedding effect systems into the type system of Haskell. Uh, so we have operations a bit like this. And this gives us a way to basically have an, a new implementation of session types in Haskell. And it uh, details on the paper, but it uses an effect graded monad to carry on, or to carry along all the effect information in the types. Okay, uh, so there's two parts, effects into the session, session calculus, and that shows how expressive session types really are. There's so much power in there. We could have used that to incorporate then effect information into existing session type languages like Scribble, or use PyCalculus to talk about, uh, I don't know, uh, compilation of effectful languages that introduce implicit par parallelism. Then we went the other way, and that shows the expressive power of effect typing. And we use that in the artifact then to build a new implementation of session types in a popular mainstream language, Haskell. So we need, still need to think about completeness, and there's some open questions about whether this encoding uh, actually describes an isomorphism. Thank you very much. So I did have a question, which is in the transformation from, uh, good presentation by the way, in the transformation from the sessions to the effect system, mm -hmm. uh, no, from the effects to the sessions. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you had to, that you were only doing it for linear continuation systems and that you had to, to kind of include an extra argument in the channel. Mm -hmm. um, this reminded me of something which is very different but related I think of how you can, in a, in a completely pure language, you can, get rid of, you can get rid of state by just passing around the value mm -hmm. everywhere. Yep. Is this a more limited transformation than that? Is this, a, when you go from effects to sessions, is this more local than that? Uh, no, it's actually quite similar. It's um, actually quite yeah. similar. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's a very similar concept. Um, it's a bit like compiling, uh, various kinds of effect into the continuation monad. Um, it's sort of, it's a bit like that, but uh, 